There are many things the Hylian man with a plan is known for throughout the chronicles of Hyrule. Courage, pointy ears, green clothes, wielding legendary blades against the forces of evil, and hearing this when he swings them. But one thing I think gets overlooked more often than not is that Link can jam out. Turns out the hero of Hyrule is a pretty talented musician, and most incarnations of Link at least play one instrument. And some are just musical geniuses, playing a variety of different instruments to perfection. And being a musician myself, I'm pretty fond of the musical aspects of The Legend of Zelda. So let's take a look at every musical instrument in The Legend of Zelda series. But real quick, if you love theories, retrospectives, or any kind of Zelda content, then don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new Zelda content like this. Thanks guys. Ready? The flute has been in several Zelda games in one form or another, and it was the very first musical instrument to make an appearance in the entire series, showing up in the original Legend of Zelda and the sequel to that game as well. The flute serves a different prime function in both of these games, and in special circumstances, serves a completely different purpose. In the original Legend of Zelda, the flute primarily warps Link to previously clear dungeons. It also splits one of the bosses, Dig Dogger, into three small variants of itself, making it easier to kill. And to many players' dismay, before you can easily find walkthroughs on the internet, the flute also drains a pond revealing a secret staircase to level 7, also known as the Demon. In the second quest, it also unveils hidden caves and level 6 as well. The melody Link plays on the flute is actually called back to in several other games. Ocarina of Time's title screen theme, in a small piece in the Wind Waker's Forbidden Woods theme, and in the Minish Cap's Wind Ruins, and also on the Ocarina of Time in the Minish Cap. Nintendo even snuck it into Super Mario 3 when you play the recorder. In the sequel, Adventure of Link, it is also referred to as the Whistle. It allows Link to pass the River Devil, who sits on the road blocking the path forward. Later on, it also makes the Three-Eyed Rock Palace appear when you play in the middle of, uh, three rocks. There's also a flute in the Oracle games. Link can use a flute to call whichever animal buddy he's met and teamed up with. Dimitri the Dodongo, Ricky the Kangaroo, or Mush the Flying Bear. Another flute in the series is called the Spirit Flute, appearing in Spirit Tracks. It's considered a sacred instrument of the Locomos. Link can learn several songs that have different effects and play duets with the Locomos to restore the Spirit Tracks to the land. It also kind of makes an appearance in A Link to the Past. But have you ever noticed that the flute looks a whole lot like an ocarina? Well, in the Japanese version, it's called an ocarina. So most likely, it was just a translation error. The ocarina is probably the most famous musical instrument in the whole Zelda series because of Ocarina of Time. But it actually showed up prior to that title and after that title as well. Its first appearance was in A Link to the Past, after finding the Flute Boy's ocarina buried in the musical grove. Link can then play it in the center of Kakariko by the weather vane, breaking it free, which it will then transport Link to certain areas all around Hyrule. Also, playing a song with it to his previous owner, the Flute Boy, in the Dark World, ominously turns him into a fox-shaped tree. The ocarina also appeared in Link's Awakening before Ocarina of Time. It's found in the Dream Shrine, and Link uses it to learn different songs that have varying effects, like the Ballad of the Windfish, which awakens the Windfish at the end of the game, and other songs like Mambo's Mambo and the Frog's Song of Soul, which have different effects like teleporting Link and bringing things to life. In Ocarina of Time, there are two versions of the Ocarina. The Fairy Ocarina, which is a token of friendship from Link's childhood friend, Saria. And of course, the Ocarina of Time, given to Link by Princess Zelda, which also appears in Majora's Mask and has many magical powers, including teleporting Link all around Hyrule and Termina, many different ways of manipulating time, causing storms, freezing the undead, opening secret passages, unlocking secret functions in dungeons, hauling animals, making lifeless clones, and just laying down tasty jams. Oh yeah, the Ocarina of Time also transforms into different instruments when Link wears transformation masks. 
taking the appropriate form when Link is either a Deku, Goron, or a Zora, as Deku pipes, drums, and a fishbone guitar. There is one more ocarina in the series in the Game Boy Advance titled The Minish Cap, called the Ocarina of Wind. It was left behind by the Wind Tribe and found in the Wind Fortress. It allows Link to travel to any of the Wind Crests scattered around Hyrule, and it actually plays the same melody that Link plays using the flute in the original Legend of Zelda, as I previously mentioned. The eight instruments of the Sirens from Link's Awakening are the Full Moon Cello, the Conch Horn, the Sea Lily's Bell, the Surf Harp, the Wind Marimba, the Coral Triangle, the Organ of Evening Calm, and the Thunder Drum. These next instruments don't really have any other function but one, and even though they are MacGuffins, similar to the pendants or medallions awarded after Link takes down the Guardian of a Dungeon, technically Link does play them even though they aren't normal playable inventory items. Once they are all gathered from the nightmares at the end of each dungeon, Link can bring them to Mount Tamaranch and plays the Ballad of the Windfish alongside his ocarina, which will open a path inside the Windfish's egg. Therein lies Link's final trial, where he faces the final nightmare, who takes form from Link's memories that are part of the Windfish's dream and don't want him to awaken, so they can keep existing along with Koholan. But after Link defeats the nightmare, Link finally meets the Windfish, who instructs Link to play the eight instruments of the Sirens so they can awaken together. And as you hear the beautiful music of the Ballad of the Windfish played by these eight instruments, Colin slowly disappears as Link awakens in the sea. To see the Windfish gracefully flying over him, along with a seagull that's implied to be an incarnation of Marin. As you hear her, sing along. I put these together because they are both from Twilight Princess, and they are using some sort of vocal skill when they play their tunes. Though a blade of grass isn't a typical instrument, Link is a musical genius and can hold a tune and stay in key with almost anything. Link in Twilight Princess lives on a ranch and seems to have a way with animals. He can find certain blades of grass and call forth hawks and his horsey pona until he gets his horse call. And although this technically isn't a physical instrument, a voice is most definitely a musical instrument. Link can eventually howl the appropriate tune when he is in wolf form. Wolf Link howls melodies from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, near howling stones which make a golden wolf appear somewhere in Hyrule. When Link finds the wolf, it will send him to a ghostly realm where the wolf, who is the hero Shade, who is the hero of Time's spirit, will confront Link and train him, passing on his skills to his descendant, the hero of Twilight. The harp shows up in a couple of Zelda games. The first Zelda game to feature a harp was the Oracle series. In Oracle of Ages, Nehru, the Oracle of Ages, has a harp called the Harp of Ages, which Link finds in a secret room in Nehru's house. The Harp of Ages has powerful magic time powers. Link learns songs that open portals, make time flow faster, and allows him to travel back and forth from past to present. This harp also is very harmful to the enemy Pole's voice. Kill it! Kill it! What? Defeating any on screen when played. Skyward Sword also features a harp, called the Goddess Harp. Originally Zelda's, who is the goddess highly incarnate. This harp isn't confirmed to be, but there's some implication that this could be the same harp Zelda uses in Ocarina of Time as Sheik to teach Link's songs, passed down through the royal family. But for now, that's just a theory. Eventually, Link dons the harp after receiving it from Zelda, and learns several songs which have varying magical effects, such as opening trial gates to the Silent Realm and activating the Gate of Time. And being that this is a music-themed Zelda video, I thought it would be blasphemy not to mention Ganondorf's organ. Although this isn't playable by Link, I thought he deserved a shout-out. Any villain who jams out on his own sinister theme music deserves a shout-out on a musical instrument countdown. Oh yeah, and these guys too. So, do you have a favorite Zelda instrument or a favorite Triforce tune? Was yours on the list? 
Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video so you don't miss out on any new Zelda content. See you soon.